What's up coders? It's me Maitland. I hope you're going well. Today we're going to do something pretty interesting. We're going to go on a little coding adventure. A friend asked me how well do I approach creating an API that has a relational database that's public, it's in the cloud, but is severely budget constrained. So a customer's approached you and asked, hey, I want this API up in the cloud. I want it to be hosted by Azure. I want it to scale automatically, but I don't want to pay any more than $5 a month. So I thought that was a pretty interesting topic. What we're going to do today is we're going to approach that topic using Azure Functions, EF Core, using the SQLite provider. We're going to create an API which lets people add work requests so they can hit the API and they can go, hey, I need you to add a new work request to the database. And that's all it's going to do for now. A few challenges we're going to face. How do we get the Azure Functions container to be able to read and write from a SQLite database? Can the SQLite database be persisted? So let's jump in and let's see if we can, if we can do it. First thing I'm going to do is if you watch my other video, is create a startup class. We do this just so we can adhere to the dependency inversion principles a little bit better. So we're going to have this as our work request HTTP trigger. So in our work request HTTP trigger, we're going to convert that back to an instance based class so we can have dependency injection. This, this endpoint is going to add a new work request. So let's call this create. Next thing we want to do is set up the model structure or the data structure. We'll have a work request. And we'll have a description inside that work request. And then we'll create an EF Core DB context class. Control full stop brings up that suggestion menu. And then you can just use keyboard shortcuts to get all your NuGet packages in. We're going to generate a default constructor. Control full stop again. Control full stop, enter. And then we're going to add a DB set of work requests. We want to make sure we're using the SQLite provider first. So we'll grab the EF Core SQLite NuGet package. Here we go. I can't remember the, the connection string format. So all I'm going to do is type in um, SQLite connection string. Then click the first link. Looks pretty easy. We're ready to use our DB context. In our actual function endpoint, in our create work request, we're going to accept two query. No, let's accept a, a post parameter. So is there anything like from body that we could use? Let's just see if this works. From body. <laughs> well, that didn't work straight up actually. Blah, blah, blah. Right. So this could be a problem because it doesn't want to use any, use anything with .NET standard 2.1. So pretty easy fix for this one. We want to use the three versions, 3.0. So in here, we're going to go 3.1.13. We're going to update to use that. Let's see if we have any more luck now. Looks like we don't. Well, it could work. So I'll bring up my postman and this is our endpoint here. I'm going to create a new request, call this create work request. And there it is. Put in the URL post. And so what it's expecting is a description DTO. So our body is going to be description fix toilet in block BA. Send it. Did it work? Ah. <laughs> So it's just in the wrong ordering of the parameters. Oh, <laughs> looking a bit better. We'll get a breakpoint now. And what do we get? What do we get? Oh, hey, hey, all right, sick. So the problem was this just needed to be the first one in there with the HTTP trigger instead of like that. Okay, so we've got the request DTO. Now we want to actually add it to the database. So let's ask our nice dependency injection framework to give us the DB work request DB context. Now we've got our work request. Since it's the create work request endpoint, 
we're going to just create a work request. So we're going to add it to our DB contacts now. Then we're going to save. All right, cool. Now let's see if this works. So there we go. It's up there. We're going to hit send. Send it. And this is going to work brilliantly. I can tell. Well, what's, what's the problem? Are you just not going to work now? So we can't load annotations component model. Weird. Let's clean that. And I don't trust how clean works, so we're going to delete the bin and objects. Vran, play. Here we go. All right, so for now, that error is just an annoying error with SQLite. We can go into here, we go into our runtimes. We're using Windows 64 bit. This DLL needs to be in here. Boom, there it is. Press play now, send, adds it, saves it. Uh, no such table work request. So we're getting somewhere. Very, very cool. We're gonna just create the database in here. No migrations or anything like that. We're just going to run it. We just want the flat database and a flat schema just so we can get through to the end of the video. Boom. We've got a database. We add it. We save it. Oh, that's what we want. Cool. Now we want to have another trigger list work requests. So we'll just do the same thing. We'll ensure the database is created. All right. So now that we've got that sorted, we should be able to actually show the work requests with the list work requests API. Lovely. So that seems pretty easy for now. What I'm worried about is I went on to ramble here a little bit and got lost in my own train of thought. But what I was trying to say was the database, the SQLite database, every time it's updated while within the Azure root directory of the Azure function, the function system is going to think that it's changed. And this means the, the app is going to refresh itself. We don't want that. We want it to save in a directory or drive that's just not going to influence anything. And our solution to this is to get the home path of the app. And the home path will be a, a drive that is outside of its www root. As you can see here, I'm removing the www root and I'm just putting the DB in the root home drive. And let's run that. It could be a little issue just with running this in a debug environment, but hey, <laughs> that's life. There we go. So it's now the database path is going to be basically what it was before. And there we go. Let's give that a test by creating a work request. There we go. The next thing to do is we're going to test if this works. So I'm going to publish this to Azure. I'm going to use a Windows container. All right, so this app service is going to go ahead and get created. So there's a couple of things that are going to happen when we deploy it. The SQLite data DLL issue that's going to come up again. We're going to have to manually put that e underscore SQLite.dll into the published folder. Then hopefully it'll just work. So I'm back and I went for a toilet break and it looks like it did the th did the thing, so we're gonna we're gonna publish that. This is what I love about programming. So what? Something about S? Cool. That's sick. All right. So when that fails, we want to go to the Azure Functions browser portal. All right. So this is the Azure Function browser portal. We're gonna go in here. Then we want to deploy this. So pretty sure we can click this to get a published profile. Then we can go import into here. All right, and it's going to work. Yep. And we're going to... All right. So that's going to import all the shit. And it's just going to work now. Like, it's just going to work. We're just going to publish it and it's It's going to work. The best thing for you to do while you wait is play Magic the Gathering. Look out the window. Sunny day today outside. Seems to be working. <laughs> All right, dope. Our Azure Functions app is up and running. Basically, we want to swap that for what we have over here in Postman. So a cool thing you can do with Postman is you can use variables. Programming, you should know what that is. So update, and then we can change this endpoint. Be cool if this just worked. Did it work? No. 500. 
Right, so we're missing that DLL, okay? Now we have to figure out how to upload <laughs> the DLL. And I guess, yeah, some option here, probably. What do you reckon? Sounds like upload DLL. Push, probably not. Cool, yep. Yep. Boom, <laughs> we did it. It actually worked, cool. Hey, sweet. All right, so after fucking around for quite a bit, I think I got it working. Lovely. Everything is awesome. Well, there you have it, guys. That's how you do it. You fuck around with it for about half an hour, then you stumble upon the answer eventually. The code is pretty simple, what you'd expect, but the, the little trick was to grab the SQLite eSQLite3 DLL. La, 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 la. You'll get that by going to your bin, your release, your runtimes. Grab the Windows x86 one, chuck it in your root directory, and make sure that it's copy if newer. Then when you go to publish it, it's gonna throw it in there, into the right directory, otherwise you're gonna get an error. The next thing I did was change the target runtime over here to Windows x86, so they matched because I got an error because I was using the x64 DLL for SQLite instead of the x86. So that's my budget API. Let me know what you think, and I, I hope you had a really good time watching the video. Thanks for making it to the end. Make sure to like and subscribe. Do all that YouTube stuff. And I'll see you next time on Maitland Codes. Bye!